Within the last few years, Jujutsu Kaisen has been known to be very complex. From its power system to the concept of Jujutsu, cursed energy, people's techniques, specific effects, all sorts. And honestly speaking, there's definitely a lot of stuff you need to keep track on within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. So much so that even with myself, I find that times I have to go back and double check on certain things. So in today's video, I'm going to explain everything about Jujutsu in detail, or at least I'll try my very best to. So it goes about saying that there will be small manga spoilers contained within this video, as I'll be mentioning every piece of information relevant within the current 226 chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen. So be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more JJK content on the channel. But just before we kick things off, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Japan Deal World. If you're looking for high quality and limited edition merchandise from all your favorite series, look no further. Since Japan Deal World has the latest merchandise directly from Japan, available for purchase. Be it figurines, manga and various other collectibles, they have it all. And they also sent me some things to show to you guys today. So I got this really dope Levi figure from the final season of Attack on Titan, this Denji figure with him in his Chainsaw Man form, which I must say is absolutely epic, and also this Shinzo figure alongside an exclusive Tokyo Avengers magazine, which released alongside this final chapter. And they also have really cool Jujutsu Kaisen items I'm sure that some of you guys watching this video will want to get your hands on. But whatever you're looking for, I'm sure they have it. And if that's the case, use my code SAGE5 for 5% off all your orders, and SAGE10 for 10% off one of your orders only. So if you've been looking for really cool stuff to buy, definitely check out Japan Deal World. But with that being said, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first things first, we have to go over the fundamental element of everything within the Jujutsu world, and that is Cursed Energy. Cursed Energy is born from negative emotions. So within human society, everyone, unless you're an anomaly to this, which is extremely rare, possesses some form of Cursed Energy, be it a large amount or a very small amount. Everyone possesses Cursed Energy. Since humans are beings which always harbor some form of negative emotion, it can range from anywhere between rage, fear or envy. Anything that can evoke a negative emotion will give birth to cursed energy. Making it impossible for humans, under normal circumstances anyway, to be freed from cursed energy regardless of the positives and negatives that comes with it. And speaking of negatives, now let's talk about curses, which are directly born from cursed energy. Since cursed energy is created from negative human emotions, it only makes sense that entities created from such a source would be negative themselves. Curses come about after a large amount of cursed energy comes together, and due to the fact humans are constantly emitting cursed energy, naturally there are a lot of curses. However, this doesn't mean all curses are necessarily harmful. The strength, feelings and overall nature of the curses born from humans depend on the image of fear shared by the masses that resulted in said curses manifestation. Which is why the stronger curses are based on things like natural disasters that most humans have a shared fear of. And anything else that you could imagine that could rival that in terms of the population having fear of would probably make for an insanely powerful curse. Like Mahito for example who was born from the hatred between people. Furthermore, in relation to the manifestation of curses, also known as cursed spirits, it's important to mention that only a handful of humans can actually control their cursed energy, meaning the majority of the human population cannot prevent their cursed energy from leaking, which results in cursed spirits being born. Next, let's go over cursed energy manipulation. As I just recently mentioned, the majority of the human population can't actually control their cursed energy. But there are chosen few who can, and these are usually the individuals you see that end up becoming Jujutsu Sorcerers or Curse Users. Jujutsu Sorcerers being the ones who exercise curses and try to protect society, and Curse Users who use their control of cursed energy for selfish and malicious desires. Outside of the humans that can control their cursed energy, Cursed Spirits can also manipulate their cursed energy, which is pretty much self-explanatory as to why, since they're made up of 100% cursed energy in the first place. To manipulate and control cursed energy requires an individual to have a strong will and a knack for it, as well as undergoing serious training to elevate their understanding of cursed energy. The foundation for controlling cursed energy is essentially being in control of your emotions and cursed energy flow at the same time. When Yuji was training to control his cursed energy, he went through the method of watching movies while constantly supplying cursed energy to a cursed corpse, which would attack him if it didn't receive a constant flow of cursed energy, which is actually a really effective training method. Since the movies of different genres would invoke a variety of different emotions within Yuji, but he would still need to be in control of his cursed energy, which stems from negative emotion. Making it a very realistic training method for a Jujutsu Sorcerer, who may feel overwhelmed or confused when going up against cursed spirits and cursed users alike, but still needs to maintain their cursed energy to fight. And just a further note into the manipulation of cursed energy for those who might need it, it was explained by Gojo that cursed energy is similar to electricity. In terms of manipulating cursed energy itself, it's extremely difficult in its rawest form, which is why it's mainly used as a fuel for techniques by sorcerers instead. Being able to control your cursed energy, providing you have more than the average human level, also enables you to see curses, jujutsu, residuals, 
anything that comes about from cursed energy pretty much. Whereas normal humans can only usually see these things in life or death situations that force their senses to be heightened, or special locations. And though it was mentioned like once or twice throughout the series, there are also people known as Windows, which are members of Jujutsu High and can see curses despite not being sorcerers. The next stage after manipulating cursed energy is being able to apply it effectively, and throughout JJK this is shown in a multitude of ways. Though all these ways given the nature of the series naturally gravitate to being effective for battle. As seen with Yuji he tends to manipulate his cursed energy to flow directly into his fists for combat which serves to reinforce his punches and allows him to inflict more damage as opposed to him punching without using cursed energy. And of course you can distribute your cursed energy to be more concentrated in specific parts of your body for offensive and defensive purposes but more experienced sorcerers with a greater understanding of cursed energy let the cursed energy in their body flow as one instead of sectioning it off, thus making it harder for their cursed energy flow to be read by others. Also, since controlling cursed energy and using it to reinforce your attacks and body is a rather basic concept for sorcerers, cursed users and cursed spirits alike, a major factor in the use of cursed energy is cursed energy output. Quite simply put, the amount of raw cursed energy an individual can exert. And again, this is something that stems from innate talent, as total cursed energy output differs on the individual. A good example being Yuto Akotsu, who has always had an abnormal amount of cursed energy. He would be able to release a larger amount of cursed energy at once in comparison to the average sorcerer. And since he also has a bigger reserve, he would run out of cursed energy slower than others which is obviously an advantage. He can also discharge a large scale cursed energy beam attack, though with the assistance of Rika due to his abnormal amount of cursed energy, which only a select few in the Jujutsu world can even manage, so he's extremely blessed. And it just further highlights on what Gojo said in chapter 12 of the manga, being that a Jujutsu sorcerer's skill set is about 80% innate talent. So it's either you go it or you don't sadly. And we also saw early on in the series Megami's reaction to the cursed room, releasing pure cursed energy as a projectile instead of a technique. So it's definitely something to brag about. Now let's go over the rare occurrences that come about as a result of cursed energy. First being the Black Flash. The Black Flash is a phenomenon that manifests when cursed energy is applied to a physical attack within 0.000001 seconds of it landing, resulting in a spatial distortion and the cursed energy flashing black. Now the black flash isn't just a visual gimmick, as landing a black flash results in the initial damage of the hit, being amplified to the power of 2.5. And the best part about the black flash is that it's so difficult to achieve, nobody is capable of landing it on demand. And the fact that only 7 people in the entire series have been recorded to have even performed it, further shows how unlikely it is to land the black flash. And a dialogue which I think is very representative of the nature of the Black Flash is that the sparks of black do not choose who to bless. And some further Black Flash info, they say once it's achieved, the user gains a greater understanding of cursed energy as a whole, and the state of reaching Black Flash is similar to athletes entering the zone, which is truly something special. And the sole record holder of the most consecutive Black Flashes in a row was Nanami until Yuji tied his record of 4 in a row. Next let's go over reverse curse technique, which I have to make a disclaimer on it isn't actually a curse technique despite the fact that it's called reverse curse technique. Confusing, I know. The simplest way to put it is that reverse curse technique is made from the multiplication of cursed energy. Reverse curse technique is a technique that is mainly used for things like healing, recovery, etc. However, due to cursed energy coming from negative energy, it would make sense that negative energy wouldn't be able to heal and things of that nature. So what's required for these types of feats is positive energy, which is why you take cursed energy which is negative and multiply it with cursed energy therefore resulting in a positive which is reverse curse technique. Negative times negative equals positive, curse technique times curse technique equals reverse curse technique. And if you're still lost through that explanation, don't worry, it's understandable. Reverse curse technique is extremely hard to achieve. Even Gojo, the strongest sorcerer alive, struggled to perform it until he was literally on the brink of death, where he gained a better understanding of curse energy, eventually allowing him to perform reverse curse technique, making it a very complex technique for sorcerers to even achieve. But from reverse curse technique we've seen things such as healing of limbs, flesh and even the replenishment of a curse technique. So there's a lot that can actually be achieved due to the positive energy that comes about from reverse curse technique, it's extremely useful. Now let's very briefly talk about special traits that can be a part of one's curse energy. Special traits are unique properties that a person's curse energy might carry. For example this might be an aura based trait in terms of its form or an elemental addition to one's curse energy as seen with Hajime Kashimo whose cursed energy has electrical properties to it, making it impossible to deflect his attacks. These are the only two examples of special traits within cursed energy that we've seen, but I'm sure you can get imaginative as to how special traits could be implemented within one's cursed energy outside of this. 
And to just close out this section, which was focused directly on cursed energies, universal effects, let me explain conditions and restrictions that exist in the world of Jujutsu. First, we have binding vows. And binding vows can either be placed on an individual by themselves, or you can place a binding vow on others should they agree to it. A binding vow is a procedure of give and take, a contract of sorts if you will, but it's typically using Jujutsu Kaisen to benefit the one making the vow, whether that be in the form of increasing their overall cursed energy or technique, or giving them an edge or bonus to said technique. But the main thing you should take away is that through imposing conditions or restrictions on yourself or others, you receive something in exchange. While there is some loopholes and leniency in some cases, such as revealing your hand. By revealing your hand, you give your enemy information on your abilities and technique, and in exchange for the disadvantage of you giving your enemy info, you can receive increased cursed energy as a result. I think the best example to this day as to how revealing one's hand can be used to the person's advantage is Todo revealing his boogie woogie technique to Hanami. He let out the information that by clapping his hands together, he can swap the places of him and another person. However, this worked in his favor and was still misleading because even though he has to clap his hands to activate it, it doesn't mean every time he claps his hands that he will activate it, allowing for his clapping of hands to be a literal feint on his opponents who are wary of the swapping. So you can see how a binding vow or a pact of that nature could be insanely useful. Then we have vows that you make with other people. And the easiest one I can use here as an example is Sukuna making a binding vow with Yuji. When Yuji had died, Sukuna made a binding vow with him, saying that if Yuji can beat him in a fight to the death, he would revive them both. However, if Yuji lost, Sukuna would gain control of his body for one minute automatically once he says the words in chain. And he also promised that he wouldn't kill anyone during the one minute that he takes over. In addition to this, another condition of this binding vow is that Yuji would completely forget about making the vow. And this was definitely a manipulative play on Sukuna's part, who instantly killed Yuji after he agreed. With Yuji being a bit on the dumber side, he easily worked this binding vow into his favor and now can gain control for one minute whenever he decides to say the words in chain in the future. But the thing about binding vows is that if you break the conditions of the vow, then you'll be punished, so once you make a pact, you have to keep it. Next, we have Heavenly Restriction. And the foundation of heavenly restriction is pretty much the same as the binding vow in terms of the give and take aspect. But what makes heavenly restriction so special and different is that it's a binding place on a sorcerer from birth. You're born with it. Heavenly restriction is extremely rare. And for example, with Toji, his heavenly restriction is that he has zero cursed energy. Absolutely none. But in exchange for that, he was granted a superhuman body, senses and capabilities, putting him on par with the strongest of Jujutsu sorcerers despite not having a drop of cursed energy. But with that being said now, let's move on to a more advanced form of Jujutsu and that's Cursed Technique. Cursed Technique is a form of Jujutsu that manifests in unique abilities per individual, roughly at the age of 5 or 6. And these techniques cannot be changed or altered, whatever your technique is, that's it. Also, if I didn't elaborate on it already, Jujutsu is an overall term for all abilities and sorcery that comes about from the use and manipulation of Cursed Energy, just to clear that up. But going back to Gojo's example of Cursed Energy being like electricity, he followed up by saying if cursed energy is electricity, then cursed technique is like the electronics. Cursed techniques all have different functions and capabilities and are powered by cursed energy. But the ability to use a cursed technique is intrinsic, so if you don't have a cursed technique, then that's tough. Cursed technique can be split into two basic categories, being innate and inherited techniques. Innate techniques are the natural cursed technique of an individual. Depending on the person, it can literally be anything. For example, Mazen's construction curse technique allows her to create objects from absolutely nothing, though it requires a lot of cursed energy and can only be used once a day. And another example of an innate technique would be Mahito's idol transfiguration that allows him to manipulate people's souls freely, changing their shapes and form as a result. Now with inherited techniques, there are innate techniques that are passed down through sorcerer bloodlines. It's a technique that doesn't necessarily manifest between parent or child or grandparents, etc. It honestly just manifests in the bloodline randomly. As we can see with Gojo being from the Gojo family, the Limitless Curse Technique is an inherited technique that can manifest within any Gojo family member when they awaken their Curse Technique. But the Gojo family is special as there is also the Ocular Jujutsu, also known as the Six Eyes, that can be inherited as well. And the Six Eyes is special because without it, a member of the Gojo clan cannot truly master the Limitless Curse Technique. Furthermore, there can only be one user of the Six Eyes in the world at a time, so the rarity of manifesting both the Limitless and Six Eyes is insane and Gojo is the first to have both the Six Eyes and Limitless Technique in hundreds of years. More examples of inherited techniques is the Ten Shadows Technique that belongs to the Zenin Clan, Blood Manipulation which belongs to the Kamo Clan, and Cursed Speech which comes from the Inumaki Clan. Inherited techniques were extremely powerful due to the knowledge cultivated from the Sorcerer families as a result of previous experience with said technique, 
serve as a double-edged sword as that information can be leaked to outsiders as well, allowing them to deal with it effectively in battle. A perfect example of this is the Gojo and Toji fight. With Toji being from the Zenin clan, he was already aware of the techniques the Limitless can produce, being Gojo's infinity, blue and red techniques. It's the same as knowing a matchup before fighting, so you can plan in advance with inherited techniques than in comparison to random innate techniques people may possess. Outside of cursed techniques that are inherited and innate ones, there's also other types of techniques that can be used by sorcerers and cursed spirits. So serving as an addition to innate techniques, we have maximum techniques. Maximum techniques are pretty much the greatest one with Jujutsu, a person can cast with their innate technique outside of a domain expansion. There's also extension techniques which is really simple since it's just further application of your cursed technique or effects that your cursed technique can cause that you weren't initially aware of. Now last but not least for the cursed technique section, we have barrier techniques. And it's only right to start off with the most known and appreciated form of barrier techniques in Jujutsu Kaisen and that's the domain expansion. Domain expansion is the highest level of Jujutsu one can achieve within Jujutsu Kaisen. We've seen complete domain expansions, incomplete ones and non-lethal ones that simply force those inside to follow the rules of the cursed technique imbued within the domain. A domain expansion is a barrier technique that enables the caster to lay out and construct a domain representative of their innate techniques. And since domains are artificial space created by the user, there is a degree of imagination required that goes into domain expansions, like we saw with Megami's incomplete Chimera Shadow Garden. And by no means is it easy to perfect one's domain expansion despite the benefits having one comes with. Domain expansions serve to amplify one's cursed technique significantly and what's really special about domain expansions is the short hit guarantee that you receive once casting a domain. Without fail your attack will land on the enemy and there are very few counters for this guaranteed hit effect of domain expansions as well as very serious drawbacks when using a domain expansion. The first being the simple domain also known as the domain for the weak which is another form of barrier technique. The simple domain technique creates a small barrier around the user preventing the domain expansion's guaranteed hit function. But this does not prevent the cursed technique of the domain's attacks in totality. So realistically, simple domain just delays the inevitable. And if a domain expansion is massively stronger than the simple domain casted, the simple domain might not last long at all. So simple domain really just buys time. Another counter for a domain expansion is the hollow wicker basket technique. And it's literally the same as the simple domain. It prevents the guaranteed hit effect of a domain expansion. There's also the falling blossom emotion technique, which is the only counter technique to a domain expansion that doesn't require the user to cast a barrier of their own. Furthermore, it actually uses cursed energy the moment the guaranteed hit connects to repel the attack. And the final counter for a domain expansion is casting your own domain expansion. Honestly, the best response if you're in this situation. But then again, only a handful can actually use domain expansion. In a clash of domain expansions, the stronger and more refined domain will prevail. Simple as that. Though you can also use domain expansion to simply create an escape route in a more refined domain as seen with Megami's Chimera Shadow Garden against Dagon. Domain expansions are also weak to attacks on the outside as seen by Yuji breaking through Mahito's self-embodiment of perfection to rescue Nanami. And the drawbacks of casting a domain expansion is that for a period of time after its deactivation, the user can't activate their cursed technique until it replenishes. So basically a cooldown due to the massive amount of energy a domain expansion uses. So naturally, most people can't even cast the domain expansion multiple times a day unless they're of Gojo's caliber or have certain conditions that enable them to. Now, before I explain the remaining barrier techniques, I do have to briefly mention the fact that Sukuno is the only person in the series to have a domain expansion without a barrier. His Malevolent Shrine is an open domain expansion, while everyone else's exists within an enclosed barrier, which is just proving of his exceptional strength as the King of Curses. His domain was said to be impossible in terms of functionality since it's like painting on empty air without a canvas. It's simply unfathomable. Though I hope we get more insight into how it truly functions in the future. And now to close off the barrier techniques, we have domain amplification and curtains. Domain amplification is a barrier technique that vastly increases a person's cursed energy output and shrouds it around them similarly to water. By doing so, you can give your attacks the properties of a domain expansion. The specific properties being the guaranteed hit effect that comes with a domain expansion Though keep in mind domain amplification and one's cursed technique cannot be activated simultaneously. So these attacks that would be guaranteed to hit would have to be from physical attacks. As a result of domain amplification, you can take in and neutralize the opponent's cursed technique when it flows into that space of the domain amplification since you aren't using your own cursed technique. And as of chapter 226, all instances of domain amplification within the series so far have been used to nullify Gojo's limitless technique which is definitely super annoying to deal with. Now with curtains, also known as veils, 
They are barriers usually covering a large distance that work as a force field to separate jujitsu related events from the outside world. So everything taking place within the barrier can't be seen from the outside. Barriers are mainly used when jujitsu sorcerers deal with cursed spirits naturally so it doesn't cause any public disruption. Furthermore, curtains can be created with different conditions, making them more effective or less effective depending on the goal of the curtain in the first place. For example, we saw during the Goodwill event, a barrier was made only to keep Satoru Gojo out, but everyone else could enter inside, which made it very difficult for Gojo to break despite being the strongest. So there's a risk and reward with certain conditions. And curtains can be broken, and the initial act of even creating a curtain is a very difficult thing since the majority of sorcerers can't even do it. And the words emerge from the darkness, blacker than darkness, purify that which is impure, is also commonly used when creating a curtain. Moving on from the barrier techniques just before we wrap up the video, we have cursed tools, cursed objects, shikigami, and cursed corpses. Starting with shikigami, shikigami are essentially familiars for those who can use jujutsu. Shikigami almost always resembles some sort of animal or monster-like creature, but sorcerers deploy shikigami within battle by summoning them to fight with them. And Megami, whose fighting style is based off the foundation of using Shikigami because of the 10 Shadows technique, is a perfect display as to how powerful Shikigami can be. And the typical stereotype of Shikigami users is that since they rely on Shikigami to fight, they tend to be weak in close quarters, which isn't always the case as proven by Megami. Next, we have Cursed Tools. Cursed Tools, as the name suggests, are tools that have been imbued with curses to give them unique supernatural powers and effects. As a result of the tools being imbued with cursed energy, it allows the tools to adopt the same effects as a person who can use cursed energy, though not all at once. For example, you have cursed tools that can exercise cursed spirits as weapons, but you have tools like Maki's glasses which enable her to see curses since you can't see them without them. There's a variety of cursed tools out there all with different uses. So cursed tools naturally can be used by non-sorcerers effectively. Cursed tools also follow the same grade ranking as sorcerers and cursed spirits, with special grade cursed tools obviously being the most powerful and valuable. And this is because all special grade cursed tools have a cursed technique imbued in them, with the playful cloud curse tool being the only exception to this. And just for an example, the inverted spear of heaven, which is a dagger that can negate all cursed techniques on contact. So cursed tools, especially the special grade ones, are very useful in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Following up from the cursed tools, we have cursed objects. Cursed objects are simply objects that contain cursed energy, though there are different types of cursed objects with very, very different functions. Some cursed objects are simply used to ward off curses due to the cursed energy they possess, but then you have cursed objects that are extremely powerful and have history to them despite being objects, the best example being Sukuna's fingers. Sukuna managed to turn himself into a cursed object after he died and incarnate once again after Yuji consumed one of his fingers. And though there are other sorcerers who have incarnated as a result of cursed objects, Sukuna is the only one who was able to do it all by himself. And besides the Sukuna fingers and curse room death paintings that enable incarnation, the only other named special grade cursed object is the Prism Realm, which is capable of sealing anything, making for a total of three special grade cursed objects currently known. And finally, we have cursed corpses, which are basically just inanimate objects that have curses imbued in them, giving them consciousness. As seen by Principal Yaga's cursed corpses, and Panda who has his own will, and three cores containing him, his brother and sister, which was needed to stabilize his body as a cursed corpse. But with that being said, we come to the end of the video. So I really hope I didn't miss anything out. The structure may have been a bit all over the place, but I'm pretty sure all the key information on Jujutsu is in there. And if I did miss anything out, or if there's any parts you need elaboration on, feel free to comment down below and I'll answer it for you as soon as possible. Also, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Right now we're on 13,600 subscribers, but my goal is to at least hit 15K by the end of July. Preferably though, I'd like to smash that goal completely, but I guess we just have to wait and see. And be sure to check out the Told You video I dropped before this one, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.